Hello and welcome to What's the Big Idea, the only game show that refuses to objectify Mark Zuckerberg, no matter how deeply we may be tempted. This is a show all about crazy moonshot ideas that could change the world, or maybe not. My name is Chandler Dean, I'm one of the writers for What's the Big Idea. Our beloved creator, Eric Cunningham, is out on assignment begging Richard Dawkins to stop telling five-year-olds that Santa isn't real. Uh, every week we bring on a new contestant and ask them five questions about a different aspirational topic that's kept a secret under lock and key until this show begins. For every question that our contestant gets right, they are rewarded handsomely with millions of dollars and spectacular prizes we would have nothing less. The one caveat is that our show is still awaiting our first round of VC funding, so while we're seeking a valuation of $1 trillion for this IP, we're not quite ready for our contestants to divest until Barbara Cochran gives us the go-ahead. Uh, but in any case, you know, we're good, it's our word, you should trust us just as much as you would trust any Silicon Valley hack. Uh, anyway, now that you've trickled in and know what the show's all about, it's time to introduce our guest for tonight. She is a writer for last week tonight, in fact. She's an unyielding Twitter socialist, and as far as I'm concerned, she's the birthday girl. Please welcome, after I figure out how to invite her on, the one, the only, Liz Hines. Let me see here, dot, 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 uh, figuring out how to do this. Here we go. Clicking go. Let's see if she gets the invitation. Here we go. Buckle up. Hey! Hi! Hi, Chandler. How's it going? It is, is, thank you. It is going great. How are you? Oh, I am so well now that you're here. Uh, again, uh, I invited you very last minute just a few days ago to do the show. You could have said, it's my birthday. I am not doing this. So uh, it is very kind of you to show up. What else am I going to? Well, I am squeezing. <laughs> Than before like a, a really big like 300 person party in a warehouse in Bush Bushwick I'm going to it's not outside uh, <laughs> people all inside great um, yeah I don't I actually don't think the virus is real as you know um, well, and my understanding is that if you say like you put like social distanced and then like some little sparkle emoji next to it in your caption then you're pretty much covered. then it doesn't count yeah legally you can't be fined for that because it's ever everyone understands what's what's happening there. Um, yeah. I'm not doing I'm not, I'm not doing anything. It's nobody does anything. <laughs> so much I, fun. I understand, but you might have wanted to do nothing on your own terms, you know. So you could easily be uh, streaming. I don't know uh, that arranged marriage show on Netflix, and that would be a perfect. Oh, I heard about that? Movie. Yeah, I did watch almost all of Search Party today, just like lying hungover on my couch. If you can tell by my hair, I haven't set foot outside all day. So <laughs> um, yeah, this well, is great. I think. It's a tremendous use of your birthday, um, and we're so glad to have you here. Thank you for um, me on. Of course. Um, so uh, I think that this will be a fun experience for you in part because uh, this show is all about uh, big, crazy ideas uh, that people have come up with to try to change the world, which means necessarily it is a show that involves megalomaniacal billionaires, uh, mm -hmm. some of your favorite people, if, uh, if your Twitter feed is to be believed. Big fan. No, no major criticisms. So, um, without further ado, I am happy to introduce uh, the topic for this evening's show. The turtleneck might have been a giveaway. If not that, then the megalomaniacal billionaire. It is, in fact, Steve Jobs is the subject of tonight's show. So, uh, just to start, do you have any, what, what's your knowledge of Steve Jobs? What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of Steve Jobs? Um, I remember that. I feel like in high school, my friends and I went through a period where we were like kind of obsessed with Steve Jobs. I don't know if that's going to translate to actually like remember airing anything. Who was in the the movie about? I don't even remember who played him in the movie. Well, there's multiple movies. Um, there's... Ashton Kutcher was in that movie. Yes. Um, that was Jobs. Was there another one around the same time? It was one of those deals? Yes, where for some reason, like three months apart, they make the same movie, like No Strings Attached, and which is also uh, an Ashton Kutcher <laughs> problem, right? Um, but yeah, the other one was Steve Jobs, uh, starring Michael Fassbender. Um, and I think that oh, one was that was the prestige. That was Sorkin. That was a Sorkin one. It was Sorkin. It was a Sorkin joint. So, uh, you know, like the representation of Steve Jobs in pop culture. Great. And I don't know if I know anything about the business. Um, 
I know you should have bought stock in Apple in like 1986 or something. I don't know. Yes, that, yeah. that is like the recurring regret. Everyone claims that they were so close. So close. Their, yeah, they came up with the iPod first and then he like sucked yeah. it up, which, which it, I It's a very much like if you had invented Facebook, you would have invented Facebook situation. Uh, so, <laughs> yes. um, but uh, yeah, I mean, for me, uh, Steve Jobs was like, He's someone that my my father idolized because he's a big Apple geek and like we had all Apple products in our household uh, growing up um, and we'd like I'd sit with my dad and watch the keynote every year at like Mad <laughs> World uh, and uh, but most importantly I uh, went on a road trip with my family where we listened to the uh, Walter Isaacson biography of uh, Steve Jobs on audiobook. Uh, That's amazing. So that's where like a lot of weird facts about Steve Jobs have stuck in my mind. And I think most of these are things that one would learn from the book, but uh, they could also be common knowledge. I mean, I'm, these are not super deep cuts. Um, they're varying in difficulty. So, and the, and the great thing is our comment section is full of, uh, uh, of people who uh, could be more than willing to help out. So you can, you can add the comments for help if, if anybody knows the answer. Uh, so let's get right uh, to it. Uh, so our first question here, Q1, uh, this is for $10 million. Well, oh, that's yeah. me. Yes, uh, a life-changing amount of money. Really uh, <laughs> well, uh, let's see if you can get it. Uh, so this is it. <laughs> so this is multiple choice. Uh, and the question is, which of these is not a failed Apple product? Okay. A- Apple Pippin, a video game console. B, Apple Cortland, a home security system. C, Apple III, a successor to the Apple II. And D, Apple Newton, a personal digital assistant. Okay, I think Apple Newton is real. So the first one is Pippin? Pippin, which was a video game console. This, okay, so you were like the sequel to the Apple II. I don't even know what the Apple II is. <laughs> I can give you that information, uh, which it was like the flagship Apple computer before the Macintosh. So it was like one of those, like, you have to type like strongbademails.exe, like to get stuff to happen. That's what the Apple II was like. Uh, and then, yes, yeah, so Apple III would be the successor to that. Okay, so the, the, the question is, which is fake? Yes, one of these are writers made up. Uh, a, Apple Pippin video game console. B, Apple Cortland, a home security system. C, Apple III, a successor to the Apple II. D, Apple Newton, a personal digital assistant. Okay, people are saying Newton, but I think Newton is real. I think I remember that one. I think that was like fairly recent. Eric Cunningham would seem to agree with you. B, the home security system. You are absolutely right. Oh. Uh, Ten million dollars for you! Wow, oh. already. Uh, that is real. I renounce <laughs> all socialism. I'm, I have ten million dollars now. Yes, uh, but guess what? Uh, you know, your greed can expand from here because the next question is going to be worth twenty million dollars. Oh, my um, I love money. <laughs> I know. Uh, I think we may be able to get a radical shift in your politics by the end of I this. I can feel it inside me. It's, it's scary, but it feels good. Listen, if everyone operated in their class interests, this would be a very different country. So I think it's very, it's fine for you to, to join the 1% here. Um, but in any case, this is question number two. Steve Jobs dropped out of Reed College after a single semester, but he stayed on campus to take classes about various subjects. Uh, which class did he credit as being hugely influential in the design of the Macintosh? A, graphic design, B, menu engineering, C, calligraphy, or D, how to create a computer called Macintosh? <laughs> that was a really prescient class offered. At <laughs> brilliant, brilliant class. Yeah. Um, here's the thing, with these weird billionaires it could totally be some shit like calligraphy it could totally be that i don't think it is but i can totally see them being like yeah actually my my basket weaving class was the most instrumental <laughs> bitcoin um i'm gonna say b again the uh, engineering 
Unfortunately, that is false. You should have gone for your first instinct. It was indeed was calligraphy. Indian. Calligraphy. Absolutely. Oh my God, I'm so mad. Here Wait, is a little bit I of really <laughs> Do I owe you $10 million now? No, you don't lose the money uh, when it is simply not awarded to you. Um, it would be great if we could hold people accountable that way. But uh, so far, we just have an IOU for $10 million on the board. And just notably, Steve Jobs talked about this calligraphy class in his uh, commencement address that he gave to Stanford. He says, uh, if I had never dropped in on that course, the Mac would have never had multiple typefaces or proportionally spaced fonts. That's what he learned about in that yeah. class. Proportionally so. Son of a bitch. Okay. Okay. I'm not mad. I'm not the mad. The other thing about Steve Jobs is the man knew absolutely nothing about computers or technology. <laughs> he only gave a shit about like aesthetics and like how beautiful. And he was like very obsessed with the look of things. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, in any case, uh, so now we are moving on to question number three. Uh, this is a category we call the big ol' idea. If you get this, you get a 51% ownership stake in Pixar. Uh, we're just snagging it from Disney and giving it to you. Um, I didn't know I wanted that until right now. Imagine what you could do with that IP, Liz Hines. You could make Woody and Buzz kiss if you wanted to, among I, other things. I don't know. With a knife. <laughs> um, so here we go. This next question is short answer. Um, so we do not provide multiple choice options for this one uh, because the value is so high um, for what they're asking. So this is a question about a, a period before Steve Jobs, a big old idea. Uh, Steve Jobs was often compared with inventor entrepreneurs like Thomas Edison and Henry Ford, but there was another inventor who Jobs considered his hero. His name was Edwin G uh, H. Land, Edwin H. Land. Both Edwin and the products he created were considered to be polarizing. What company did Edwin H. Land found? Edwin H. Land, L-A-N-D? L-A-N-D, that's right. Controversial before Steve Jobs. Polarizing is the specific oh, pol word. Yes. Okay, polarizing. And uh, you can also consult, I don't know if the com oh, the comments are, are going off here. We have some thoughts, so you can always consult them. I Would Polaroid be, po oh, polarizing. <laughs> okay, that's a good guess. And I was going to say something like, I don't know, AI, but like, that seems like that's too recent. That's true. <laughs> I mean, like, Thomas Edison had some version of AI, but it was like not something that Steve Jobs would have taken seriously, even if it came from Edwin H. Land. Um, Polaroid sounds right. And I do not have a better guess. So let's say Polaroid. You're I mean, absolutely right. You trusted the um, comments and you're rewarded handsomely. Now, uh... Give half my Pixar stake to this person who helped me out. <laughs> yes, uh, YouTube. Uh, you can uh, give that person Pixar. YouTube. YouTube. Oh, is that that makes more sense? YouTube. Than YouTube. Uh, <laughs> um, they, they can make the third Monsters Inc. movie that everyone's been clamoring for. So that's great. Okay, now we're moving on to question four. We got two questions left. Um, so this is our uh, real big or real fake question. And if you get this right, you will earn the right to finally produce a good version of a Steve Jobs biopic. Um, for oh, my Aaron Sorkin's so bad. Yes, you will crush Aaron Sorkin in your fist if you get this right. Um, so this is real or fake uh, is the only two options. Steve Jobs was highly methodical in every aspect of his work, and that expense extended to his personal life. The following is a quote, it could be real, it could be fake, from Steve Jobs about the family's process for selecting a washing machine. Is this real or one our writers made up? We spent some time in our family talking about what's the trade-off we want to make. We talked a lot about design, but also about the values of our family. Did we care most about getting our wash done in an hour versus an hour and a half? Or did we care most about our clothes feeling really soft and lasting longer? Did we care about using a quarter of the water in the machine? We spent about two weeks talking about this every night at the dinner table. Liz, is that a real psychopathic quote or a fake psychopathic quote? Now, I have a, I have a context question here. Yes. You are one of the writers on this show, correct? I am one of the writers on this show, correct. 
And so you had a hand in selecting these questions and I assume picked the topic and committed to it beautifully with the turtleneck. <laughs> that is correct, yes. Now, since you and your dad know so much about Steve Jobs and you listen to that audiobook, I am going to say that you would have a treasure trove of wild quotes and I'm gonna say this is true. Oh, you got me. It is yes. absolutely right. Uh, you win, what was it again? Oh yeah, the right uh, to purchase, uh, to, to make a Steve Jobs biopic. And finish Aaron Sorkin once and for all. Yes. Uh, at long last, that man has had it too good for too long. And you, you will put it into his ring. Guy has like four lines. We're going to stop him. I know. Uh, it is unthinkable. All right, Liz, you've been crushing it. You've gotten three out of the four questions. I think this might be close to a big idea record here. I don't think we've ever had a full sweep. So you might be one of our most uh, successful contestants of all time already. But you can bring it to the next level. Uh, as we go to our final question. Oh, wait a minute. This is upside down. Here we go. Uh, big idea. You will earn Steve Jobs' net worth. This isn't the question, but what do you think Steve Jobs' net worth was at the time of his passing in 2011? Oh, my God. It was in every article when he died. Um, $10 billion. $7 billion. But it wasn't a question worth anything. But, yeah, $7 billion. <laughs> Obviously, it's more than 10. Oh, my God, I'm a fucking idiot. I don't know. No, not, not more than 10. Seven. Person. Oh, wait, seven. Seven billion. Yeah. Wait, he was cited as a generous billionaire who donated a lot of the worth that he could have had. Um, he was still worth seven billion dollars. He could have given a little bit more. But, um, yes, he was much less rich than Bill Gates, that's for sure. Yeah. As someone who only recently became rich through this game, I don't really know like how big numbers should be or how much people right. should. Obviously, they yes. should on any of it though, so we can all agree on that. So, for those of you keeping score, Liz currently has ten million dollars, uh, the rights to produce a Steve Jobs biopic, and a fifty-one percent stake in Pixar. I believe with all those things together, the Pixar thing might be enough to put you in the billionaire category. But an additional seven billion dollars of Steve Jobs' net worth. I mean, come on, you got to go for it, right? You can't, you can't, you got to afford a little more. I got to go. I want it. All right. So here it is. This is what will uh, determine whether you get it or not. This is another short answer question. And of course, you can ask the audience for help. Steve Jobs wanted to flush his body of mucus and stop producing body odor so that he would not have to shower or use deodorant regularly. What unorthodox diet did he embrace in order to accomplish this. No body odor, no mucus. Oh, I, I knew this at one point. Um, oh my God, does anyone know in the comments? We'll get some time for the comments to feel free to space out your thought process uh, as we get some answers. Don't think it was, I don't think it was like keto. I think it was something weirder than that. Fruitarian, it could be. All carrots. Who's that guy? Um, who's like the terrible guy who men who don't have a good relationship with their father, unlike you with your dad and Steve Jobs, men who like turn to to teach them about life, and he only eats meat, and then he ended up in like a coma because he only ate meat. Jordan Peterson. Jordan ah, Peterson. yes, yes, yes. That guy. Um, I don't think it was that because I guess Steve Jobs would have ended up in a coma. In a coma. No salt. That's interesting. Although, don't you think salt would maybe dry out the mucus? What if it was only salt? That would be wild. <laughs> Eric, does, I can't tell if Eric is trying to help you jog your memory on Jordan Peterson <laughs> or if he's saying that that was Steve Jobs' diet at all Jordan Peterson. All Jordan Peterson's all the time. It makes you very sad. Um, maybe it was all fruit. Oh, my God. I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm going to guess... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to guess that he, like, only ate fruit. Sure. You're absolutely right. Welcome to the 7 Billion Club. Oh, my Steve God. Jobs was a fruitarian. And, yes, he believed that it would make him not have body odor, and he was wrong. He reeked, and everyone was too afraid to tell him because he was, in fact, a totalitarian boss. Uh, Wait, so so is that actually what you call it, a fruitarian? Yes. And it is a diet that is not recommended uh, by medical professionals. Um, he actually, and this is a little bit tragic, but when, when he first got his cancer diagnosis, in lieu of traditional therapies, 
he said, well, this worked for body odor. Let's see if it works for this. And he tried to just have an all fruit diet. Um, and like he would eat like one item at a time, like carrots or whatever. But yes, all an all fruit diet is what he did a lot of the time. It did not work for anything. It is not medically advisable. Don't do it. And he said, oh, this did work for body odor. Everyone around him knowing that it didn't. And yes. was like, he believed that he was successful in not uh, in loose, uh, having body odor from, from eating all fruit. So um, did not work. It just made him unhealthy. It just made him miss out on necessary proteins and vitamins and things like that. What would like happen to your kidneys? It sounds awful. It's like only there's sugar in all fruit. Yes, it's very bad. And also he would fast for days on end. He had a whole bunch of really harmful diets that he would pick, each more bizarre than the last. And it contributed to his temper and it was just, it was just a mess. Oh my God. Do you think that all these billionaire guys do fasting things like that because they know that they monetarily shouldn't exist and this is like a form of self-flagellation? Just what they, <laughs> they all do the fasting thing. I'd like to think that um, it comes down to a natural human need for humility and graciousness. But ultimately, I feel like it's more like if you're a billionaire, you there is no reason for you not to think that every decision you've ever made isn't a brilliant, genius decision because it has brought you a life of untold fame and fortune. So you just think you can't be wrong. So just every fucking stupid thought that comes into your head, you're like, oh yeah, everyone else is doing this wrong and I'm doing it right. Um, I think that's more what it is. That's good insight. You put on that turtleneck and immediately got insight into a billionaire. It's scary, the power that has. It is the Theranos method. Um, that is what, uh, what's her name did uh, as well. Uh, yes, Elizabeth Holmes, she put on the turtleneck and she got all of the None of the uh, talent, but all of the insanity of Steve Jobs. And I find myself slowly spiraling into that uh, as well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Liz Hines. A very happy birthday to you. Thank uh, before, you. Before we sign off, um, I know that there was a charity you were promoting on your Twitter for your birthday. I'd love to give you a moment to, uh, to plug it right now. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Um, my favorite charity is Meatloaf Kitchen in New York, and they've been operating out of church basements in the East Village for like 40 years. And they serve hot meals every Saturday to food and housing insecure New Yorkers. And their motto is just that every single person deserves to have a meal cooked with dignity and served to them by friends. Anybody can walk in, no questions asked. And um, I have a breakdown on my story of like what they need and how pricing works and how everything that you donate, even if you donate $2, that gives me love to one person. So thank you so much for letting me promote that. I would love if people could show them some love today. It's and a tremendous cause. Here too. Yes. And yes, it's important to note, uh, Liz Hines is here now, a, a multi-billionaire asking all of you to donate a small portion of your paycheck to this charity. I'm sure some amount of that $7 billion is going there as well. Totally. Totally. But let's remember it's on all of us equally and not really me at all. Yes, very true. Uh, the billionaire mindset has already set in. Thank you so much, Liz Hines. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, good night and good idea. Bye. Thanks, Chandler. Woo!